In this video, we'll be talking about some lesser known methods that help me scale my Laravel apps to millions of users. I've got five great tips for you, but before we dive in, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. Without much further ado, let's dive in. Tip number one is to have a database read and a write connection. An effective strategy to manage the load of your database is to separate your read and your write operations into different database connections. This approach can significantly improve the performance and help ensure your application remains responsive under heavy load. Splitting the read and the write connections allows you to direct read operations like select queries to a replica database, while write operations like insert, update or delete go to the primary database. This helps distributing the load more evenly and prevents bottlenecks. In our multi-tenant food ordering web app, we have a single database for all of our tenants. Friday evenings are the busiest period on the platform with over 40 orders per second at the peak. Having a read replica ensures that our merchants aren't affected by all these write operations when they are looking up the orders they have to prepare. Configuring Laravel to use multiple connections is pretty easy. You'll need to define your read and write connections in the connections array of your database.php config file as follows. The sticky option ensures that read operations immediately follow writes on the same connection because there may be some delay before the read replica is up to date. To set up a read replica on our multi-tenant food ordering app, we used AWS Database Migration Service. This service allowed us to set up a read replica without any downtime, because 10 years ago when I set up the database, I didn't know any better and I didn't set up a read replica. If I were to start a new project today, I'd set up a read replica from the very beginning, saving me a lot of hassle down the line. Tip number two is batch inserts and updates. Instead of executing multiple individual queries, batch operations allow you to insert multiple records in a single query, reducing your database overhead and speeding up your application. Let's take a look at this code for example. I have a fresh Laravel project with two models. We have an order that has many line items. Here we have a fictional card with a couple of line items. And let's say we want to convert this into an order with associated line items. Your first instinct may be to create an order as follows and then loop over the card and create a line item as follows within the loop. Now, if we take a look at the queries executed, we'll see we'll have an insert statement for the orders, which makes sense. And then we have four insert statements for every line item. Now, let me show you how we can optimize this. Instead of creating line items inside the loop, Let's do it as follows. Let's loop over the card and add the order ID onto every item. And then we will insert every item in the card array into the line items table as follows. If we take a look at the queries that are executed right now, we still have our insert into orders query, but we only have a single insert statement into the line items table. If you take a look at the bindings, you'll see that we insert the apple, the banana, the cherry and the pear all at once in a single statement. This way we will only execute a single query no matter how many line items there are in your cart. Now, this method comes with the drawback of bypassing every model event because you interact with the database directly. This also means you won't get free functionality like automatic timestamps, so plan accordingly. Tip number three is a full page cache. By caching the entire HTML output of a page, Laravel can bypass the complex process of generating views, querying databases, and executing business logic for every request. Implementing full page cache in Laravel involves middleware that checks for cached versions of a page before proceeding to the controller. If a cached version is found, it's served immediately. Otherwise, the request is processed normally and the output is cached for later use. In our food ordering web app, we put all of our menu pages in a full page cache for 30 seconds. Now, this may sound short, but at peak times we get hundreds of visitors per second, so this cache drastically reduces the load on the server. Lucky for us, implementing a full page cache is actually pretty easy thanks to the Laravel response cache library of Spassy. Let's take a look at a demo. Working with the Laravel response cache library of Spassy is pretty easy. The first thing you do is require it in your composer.json file. And the easiest way to make use of the response cache is to apply the following middleware to your route. 
We have a middleware that's called cache response colon and then we have 300 seconds so the response will be cached for 300 seconds. Now I added an artificial delay of two seconds here. So the first time we come to the route it will take two seconds and after the first time when it's been cached it will be instantaneous. So let's take a look. Now, as you can see we're loading, we're still loading and after two seconds we'll get our hello world. Now when we refresh we can see it's instantaneous. When we open up the network inspector and we refresh, we can take a look at the response headers here and we can see that the Laravel response cache header has been set at this date. Tip number four is use pre-computed JSON files on a CDN. By storing pre-computed JSON files on a CDN, for example, Amazon S3 combined with Amazon CloudFront, you ensure that the data can be requested multiple times without hitting your server. This way, you reduce the workload on your Laravel application server and potentially your database server. Let's take a real-world example as a case study. I developed a point-of-sales application that can be used in a restaurant by multiple waiters on multiple devices. In the point of sales application, we have a table plan that shows table with an ongoing order in red and others in white. When a table is opened by a waiter, their name also appears on the table and the table is locked for others. Instead of having an endpoint that returns the entire table plan with all the details of all the tables, we opted for pre-calculated JSON files on a CDN. In the background, our point of sales app is downloading the following JSON files. We have our business ID tables.json on the CDN, which contains a list of every table that's associated to this current business. And then we download all the individual table files that have a detailed overview of the properties of the table. Downloading these files is blazing fast because they are compact and downloaded in parallel. In addition to that, CloudFront serves them from the most optimal edge location for the user, reducing the latency even further. All these JSON files are pre-calculated by our Laravel application and are kept up to date in a very optimal way. When a waiter opens a table, we send a request to our Laravel app and our Laravel app only overrides the JSON file of that specific table. Finally, we send a WebSocket event to all other devices so they can download the updated file and update their UI accordingly. Initially, we handled this in our Laravel app using a Redis cache. But this was a big waste of server resources because even though most of the data never changes, Nginx and FPM were still handling these requests and passing them on to our Laravel app. Offloading these pre-calculated JSON files to a CDN was crucial to reduce the workload of our application servers and our database. And tip number five is don't run synchronous reports. Merchants love to look at reports, especially at busy times. Generating reports are often a time-consuming task, so we learned the hard way not to run reports during an HTTP request. Instead, put your reporting on a queue, ideally one specifically for reporting, so other aspects of your application aren't affected by slow reports. I'm also going to double down on the first tip, and that is to set up a read replica. Don't do reporting on your main database because you will end up with slowdowns at peak times. If you can, also try to schedule your reporting during off-peak times, for example at night. For our system, we pre-aggregate all the data nightly in a separate table, so we can run more efficient queries. Finally, make sure you keep an eye on your slow query log and optimize your queries where necessary. And that concludes the video. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I hope you learned a thing or two and I will see you in the next one.